Hi, and welcome to 5 Minute Statistics for Clinical Research. My name is Caroline Herborn, and I am part of the Biostatistics team at GCP Service International. The basis assumption for many statistical tests is usually that the data follows a normal distribution. But what is a normal distribution? Which characterizations does it have, and why is it so important? In today's video, we are going to answer all these questions. The normal distribution, or Gauss distribution, is called normal as it is seen as the ideal case of a distribution. It is showing the distribution of the probability of an observation to occur in a certain class, for metric data. Let's look at some examples. If you want to assess what is the average height of adults in a population, they will range between a minimum and a maximum value. Most of the people will have a height of, let's say, around 1,60 m, or in other words, the probability of finding a person that is 1,60 m large is very high, whereas to find a person of 190 is very low, because heights like 190 or 140 are rare compared to heights between 160 and 180, for example. So what you can see here is the probability distribution of heights in adults in a population. The characteristics of a normal distribution are the following. It has the shape of a bell jar and is symmetrical. It has its maximum in the mean and its infliction points, so where the curve changes from the left to the right curve or vice versa, in mean plus one standard deviation and minus one standard deviation. Towards infinity and minus infinity, so towards the tails, it approximates the x-axis. The normal distribution is defined by two parameters, the mean and the variance. Let's look at some examples. The simplest case of a normal distribution is the standard normal distribution, where the mean equals 0 and the standard deviation is 1. If the mean is different from 1, the whole curve is shifted accordingly along the x-axis. If the variance is larger, the curve becomes flatter and wider. One of the most important properties of the normal distributed variables is that they could be transformed into the standard normal distribution by standardization, which includes two steps. First, subtracting the mean, and second, dividing by the standard deviation. But why would we want to standardize our distribution curve? The advantage of the standard normal distribution is that we know exactly which probabilities we can find in which ranges regarding the area under the curve. The values within one standard deviation around the mean, positive and negative, which is also called sigma, account for 68.27% of the data. Within the reach of two standard deviations, we will find 95.45%, and within three standard deviations, we are covering 99.73% of the data. This is also known as the 68.95.99.7 rule, or 3 sigma rule. The other way around, we could also ask in which interval do 80, 90, and 95% of the data lie since these are the most common values in the analysis of clinical trial data. The interval around the mean is 1.28, 1.64 and 1.96 sigma respectively, when the cutoff is always applied on both sides. The assumption of the data being normally distributed is a request for many statistical tests, but it has to be analyzed carefully if that is really the case, since a test based on that assumption when actually the data is not normally distributed can result in non-reliable test results. Therefore, also the statistical test has to be chosen very carefully always. So that is it for today. As you can see, the transformation of any normal distribution into the standard normal distribution bears many advantages and facilitates the handling and interpretation of data. If there are any additional questions, our team of statisticians is happy to help you out. Leave us a message at statistics at gcp-service.com or leave a comment below. If you are significantly satisfied with the content, make sure to subscribe to not miss the next video.